Good morning, everybody. My name is Julia Dumain. I'm the Supervisor of Strategy and Operations for the Connecticut Public Utilities Regulatory Authority. I'm joined by Director Joshua Ryer um, and Supervisor of Gas and Pipe, Gas Pipeline Safety, um, Carl Baker, as well as our Director of our um, Education Outreach and Enforcement Unit, Tom Lopez. Um, we'll be providing a brief overview of this RFP and the specific scope of work that it includes, um, and then a uh, update on the schedule of the RFP as well as the docket, um, followed by an opportunity for comments or questions for clarification um, on the actual proposal requirements and scope of work. Um, was there anything else you'd like to say as, before we get started, Josh? No, thank you, uh, everybody, for for being here and for the interest. Um, rate cases of, are, of course, uh, one of the most important, if not the most important thing that we do here at Pira. So we appreciate um, your interest in in helping us uh, conduct those responsibilities. I will flag, and we won't go over this in, in the the slides, but the docket that's referenced here is open, uh, and it's in response to uh, the Avon Grid gas companies notifying us that they plan on submitting a rate application on or before November first. And you'll see in the the notice of proceeding in that uh, docket that uh, it references filing it jointly. We do anticipate the companies to uh, both uh, submit a rate application, but separately. Um, the point of having them submit it jointly is, of course, they're owned by the same parent company, so to be able to compare and contrast, but we do anticipate two separate rate applications. With that, I'll turn it over to Julia to walk through the RFP. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so, Rate cases in Connecticut are um, governed by a few key statutes. Um, Con Connecticut General Statute sec sec Section 16-19 um, outlines the specific um, filing requirements that the companies must include with their rate application. Um, and it also establishes mandatory deadlines for Pura to complete this review, which will be enforced um, with any engagement with any consultant. Um, for gas and electric um, rate case filings, we have 350 days to complete the review, which would apply here. Um, and then all other service, um, public service companies have 270, well, 200 days currently and 270 days if Public Act 23-102 is um, signed into law. Um, and if we do not meet this deadline, then the company's proposed amendments become effective. Um, section 16-19A um, outlines the uh, conduct for um, review and investigation of the financial and operating records for each of these companies. Um, Public Act 20-5 updated um, this requirement to include performance-based incentives and penalties and metrics in any rate case hearing, which we are investigating. And then um, uh, Section 16-19E um, specifies the principles and guidelines that PIRA must use while conducting its investigation um, and determining the, um, uh, the just and reasonableness of um, the justness and reasonableness of the proposed rate amendments. Um, so the RFP itself is broken up um, into uh, technically two different um, or f six different um, tasks um, that would be split between the Pura decisional staff and the Pura Office of Education Outreach and Enforcement. Um, across all of these six tasks, there are a set of general um, uh, tasks that must be completed by any retained consultant, um, and we've divided those into discovery and advisement. Um, regardless of which tasks you bid um, to provide services on, we will request that you assist us in conducting research to benchmark any relevant portions of the utilities rate application, um, that you would help uh, reviewing any pre-filed testimony and relevant discovery responses, that you assist with drafting any discovery um, prompts or interrogatories, that you uh, help us with, our, um, with conducting the cross-examination of any party or intervener witnesses, um, we will request um, assistance assessing relevant portions of legal briefs, um, and you will also be required to attend all notified evidentiary hearings, um, late file exhibit hearings, and oral arguments. Many of the authorities um, 
uh, procedural events over the past several years have moved to virtual, but for rate cases, we are can we have now um, returned to in-person events, and so we will um, ask that you participate in person at those. Um, and finally, we um, your final deliverable will be assistance in drafting um, sections of our final decision and assisting staff with that. Um, Generally speaking, we also require that um, you attend any um, internal strategy meetings. Those will likely be virtual, so um, that that should be clear. Um, and we also will um, request um, advisement on the incorporation of any written exceptions or oral, oral arguments submitted um, with respect to our proposed final decision. Um, and then um, uh, this last bullet is redundant, but yes, participating in remote access um, internal strategy meetings. So across all of this, the next slides topics, um, these are uh, required um, services. So um, for our decisional staff, um, Pura is divided into an office of decisional staff, technical staff, and then our office of education outreach and enforcement who um, operate as, uh, among many other things, our, our customer affairs unit and as a participant in the docket. Um, so tasks one through five will be specific to Pira's decisional staff. Um, task one will consider um, um, the tax issues pertaining to the rate case. Task two um, will look at the rate base issues related to depreciation, um, plant and service, and um, other engineering tasks as well as directed by our um, gas pipeline safety unit staff. Um, and this will include things like uh, unused service lines and inspection costs and other specific engineering analysis. Um, task three, uh, we'll look at a variety of rate design issues, including advanced rates, cost of service studies, and forecasted revenue and customer statistics. Um, task four, we'll look at the shared service cost allocation issues, um, both interdepartmental and between affiliates and subsidiaries of the companies. And then lastly, task five, we'll investigate the information technology, cybersecurity, and billing systems of the company um, and assess the sufficiency of these, um, of these uh, topics, as well as the IT organization frameworks of the companies. Um, you may submit a proposal uh, to uh, provide services on one or more of these tasks. Um, you may do all of them as well, um, but if you uh, would like to focus specifically on one, we will also accept proposals on that. Okay, um, for the EOE consultant, um, education outreach and enforcement consultant, um, we've also split up some of the specific tasks that will be required across the work conducted on that task. Um, it's important to note that proposals submitted um, for this task will be firewalled off from the first five tasks. Um, so you will be working only with EOE. And if you choose to submit a proposal that includes um, both EOE's task and, sorry, um, the tasks on the previous slide, you must provide clear information as to how you will prevent any um, ex parte violations and um, ensure that the firewall is um, remain, remains intact. Um, but we have divided the, the necessary tasks here into research and advisement um, slash representation for EOE. Um, there are some that are required tasks, which are denoted by the asterisks. Um, and then there are some that are sort of as an as needed basis. Um, First, we will um, require assistance researching the perception of regulated utilities as public ser service providers in Connecticut. Um, we also are hoping to be able to prepare a baseline analysis of the performance metrics and accountability specific to customer care and social investment practices. We will be analyzing funding costs, purpose and impacts of customer care and other public facing social investments and associated business initiatives. Um, we would like to be to research uh, best in class customer care and social investment practices and metrics on a nationwide basis to understand um, where we stand there. And then um, last for research, we would also look, like to look at best in class state and household level customer care um, and with a specific focus on vulnerable customers. Um, for advisement purposes, we're looking for recommendations on best in class practices. Um, for the public benefit of Connecticut customers um, and any as recommended associated performance metrics. 
we are looking, um, we would like assistance uh, drafting interrogatories and other discovery um, on behalf of the um, education outreach and enforcement staff. Um, we may seek assistance with drafting pre and or late filed testimony. Um, you may be asked to represent EOE as a witness um, or assist in reviewing any other parties' filings um, and then um, provide recommended rebuttal testimony if needed. Um, and then finally, reviewing the draft decision and um, preparing any written um, uh, exceptions if needed. Um, for the proposal itself, Um, Pura has created a some format. We have outlined the required proposal components in table one of section three of the RFP. Um, and we ask that you please prepare your proposal in that sequence so that we can um, streamline our analysis and comparison of the different bids. Um, <clears throat> and then we also have a standardized cost reporting um, table format that we ask that you use um, for the same reason. And if you have questions about that, please let us know. Um, as I mentioned on the first slide, um, we are um, required to complete this in um, 350 days. Um, the statutory deadline um, based on a November 1st application filing by the companies is October 16th, 2024. Um, so we would retain you, um, plan to retain you through that um, time. Um, this is a planned draft timeline of the docket um, for your planning purposes in terms of the um, scope and extent of work required at each stage of the next year or so. Um, this is uh, subject to some change, but is generally the plan for now. Finally, this is the um, next steps for the RFP itself. Um, we ask that you submit a notice of intent to bid by today. Um, this is not required. Um, you may still submit a bid if you do not do this. This is just helpful for the authority to plan um, our review process of the bids. Um, we originally had our deadline for questions or clarifications on the RFP itself of June 30th, but we plan to push that out a week to July 7th. Um, please submit those to pura.rfp at ct.gov. Um, you can also submit your notice of intent to bid to that email. Um, we will do our best to issue clarifications and responses to those questions on a um, uh, anonymized and uh, uh, basis by July 14th. And we will post those on the RFP web pages um, and then also distribute them to um, the, the bidders that have notified us that they intend to bid. Um, and then the proposal due date is July 26th, so exactly one month from now. Um, and please submit that to pura.rfp at ct.gov. Once again, all of the requirements for the RFP are included um, in the RFP itself and clearly outlined. Um, and then this uh, hyperlink takes you to um, the web page for the specific RFP. And that concludes the presentation for this morning. Um, if you would like to ask any questions, please use the raise hand function, um, which is included in the reactions button at the bottom menu. Okay. I'm not seeing any. Um, oh, Stephanie. Hi, sorry, I'm too busy looking for the button here. I might as well just ask the question. Sure. A couple of real quick ones. Um, should we assume that all the communication with the utilities will have to be in written form? I'm, I'm thinking of things like cybersecurity and some of those issues that can get very, you know, sensitive and things like that. Will all the, you know, interrogatories be written or is there any thought of having sort of technical conferences or anything like that? Certainly, we hold hearings that um, will allow for cross-examination, um, but and there's also a period of audit, I believe, um, where the staff will be in the company's offices. Right. Um, but I would ask that um, either Director Ryer or um, Supervisor Baker provide any additional context there. Yeah, the I I think you covered both of the main 
areas that we where we'd investigate that any so there's an in-person audit i, I want to say for the uira case it was three days it, somewhere between three and five days um and so a lot of those questions could get answered then i'd also say that we of course have procedures for keeping information confidential uh, and if we needed to have a confidential hearing uh we could do that as well um, so it would be atypical to have a, a technical meeting, um, but certainly if, if that's something we felt like was really necessary um, to make sure all the parties were on the same page, we we, we could do something like that. Okay. Um, if one were to bid on more than one task, um, should the pricing be for all together? Should they be priced as if you would win each one separately? Um, how do you prefer that? So in the... RFP, we have the um, the cost spreadsheet template provided, and you um, will submit your proposal um, and break out each task based on number of hours total for your firm. You will provide um, the hourly rates for each of the assigned staff, and it should be able to calculate to a cost per um, per task. Um, and then a total cost. I should also mention that um, Connecticut general statute um, requires that, um, uh, or it sets a limit of $200,000 as our budget per proceeding um, for this analysis. There is the ability to exceed that for good cause, um, but your proposal, um, generally speaking, as this is just one individual docket, um, should be at the two hundred thousand um, dollar maximum limit, um, and then we have the uh, authority to judge whether we need to exceed that for for um, good cause. Um, so, basically, long story short, there's a way to break out the individual tasks, but we will most likely evaluate your proposal holistically. Um, quick yeah, and then. Sorry. Just two quick things to add to that. Yeah, I, I will I agreed on all of that. I will say though that um, optionality is always is helpful. Like for example, uh, in the past we have had um, folks bid in their specific costs for each task, and then bid a, a separate you know provided a separate analysis on if you pick us for three at least three we'll give you a five percent discount across the board things like that so things like that are helpful to us because we are truly evaluating um the bids based on the tasks and who's best suited to each task um so so that helps and we have picked teams before right multiple consultants um to, to help us on rate cases so i wanted to flag that the other thing that i wanted to flag is that um, once we um, once we do sign a contract, there will be a hard do not exceed uh, number that's in that contract. Um, so just keep that in mind uh, when you you submit your bid. Um, just to help me on the the travel side of thing, will will the um, hearings on each utility be held together? Would they be separate hearings? And you know, can you give me an idea of maybe how many you know kind of trips would be involved, you know, for for hearing? Just kind of a rough idea. Yeah, great question. Uh, I think we put in the um, the RFP a rough schedule. I want to say we have four weeks currently blocked off for for hearings. We have not uh, internally uh, what well, we've discussed, but we haven't decided. Uh, exactly how we're going to sequence the hearings um since a lot of this the personnel that that do the accounting for example um uh for uh avant grid generally will be the same you know will be the same witness panel uh for the the, the two companies we we are thinking about ways to to make sure we can do that more efficiently we haven't landed on anything but what we do what i would say is what is uh what will be illustrative for you is to go back and look at the agendas that we uh, put together for um, both the UI rate case, so docket 220808, and uh, the Aquarian rate case uh, 220701. And those grouping of topics are generally how we will group the topics. And so, for example, if you were the rate design um, consultants, 
we would typically, I want to say for the UIRA case, it was the first three days. So we tried to put that together to minimize the number of trips that you'd have to take. Um, it certainly, if you were, you know, awarded all five tasks, it's likely that you would need to be here for, 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 for most, if not all of the four weeks. Um, but if you're, you're only assigned to, to one or two tasks, we try to balance our consultants and, and other people's consultants in, you know, thinking about what, you know, how we group the topics so that folks can have, you know, just, just really one trip, uh, to cover that topic. That's good. And then you, uh, the, if you anticipate um, the on-site uh, meetings with the utility, I mean, assuming those would be on-site, you've talked about a few days um, of discussions with the utility, audit period with the utilities, those would be on-site also? They would be, yes. Okay. Great, thank you. Hey, go ahead, John. Uh, Julie, you might be on mute. Um, I am, sorry. Yes, and I, I did say <laughs> thank you, Stephanie, and uh, I did call on you, Mr. Athos. Thank you. <laughs> no, no problem. I appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to clarify that the um, that you said that the um, the, the statutory um, limit of subject that, 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 that you can find reasons for otherwise, that's by the whole proceeding for all all five tasks and or and or is that actually all six tasks including eeo eeo i mean it it's it's the whole thing yeah i mean it is i think i i think really what um to get to the crux of what uh, julia was was speaking to is is really we're looking for you know your best your your best bid per and justification of of your bids by task um, certainly, um, rate cases, consultants for rate cases can be um, upwards of two hundred thousand. So there may well be a cause to go to go over, um, but we don't want to. Uh, that's not something we're necessarily committing to right now. If that hopefully that answers the question for you. Yeah, I was just trying to think about the fact that you don't know what you've been on the other tests. What the, what's people are bidding on the other tests? So you have, you have no idea where that stands in the. Um, in the total of the 200. Yeah, give us, I think that the crux of it is, give us your best pricing uh, that you could also live with being a hard cap. <laughs> and, and the last thing about that is, do you know that you're um, going to, um, are you, are you um, this, is, this is too definitive a word, but are you somewhat committed to hiring um, consultants for each, for all those tests or is it, um, or is this the potential for all those for each of those tests? Great question. Um, there are certain parts, uh, for example, um, the I forget how we bucketed it, but the essentially engineering and depreciation bucket, we will for sure be getting a consultant. Um, I would imagine we'll likely get a consultant for revenue allocation and rate design. Um, the and then. Um, it, and then I would say tasks one, uh, four, and five are a little bit more um, up in the air in terms of it depends on the, the bids we get and how how uh, the quality of expertise and the the um, yeah the value that we see in the the bid that is provided. And then uh, I don't want to speak too much for EOE since they're here, but I I think that what I just said about task one, four, and five also applies to to EOE in terms of they'll evaluate the bids. And may or may not select anyone, but I'll I defer to uh, Director Lopez if yeah you think otherwise. Yeah. It, it, I, I hope you can hear me. I usually have the headphones, but if folks can hear me, um, that's true. I I would say that task six is more on par uh, with uh, the tasks one, four, and five. So um, you know we'll evaluate bids um, and and and, but it's it's not an absolute a requirement that we have someone for that it's it may be a nice to have i guess as a easy way of putting it great thanks a lot that helps okay great thank you for the questions um are there any final questions um i did just I just confirmed 
just a quick thing, I, was, I did confirm there were three in-person audit days. Thanks, Josh. Um, I did just note a couple of other people just joined, so I'll just run through this one more time just for those new folks. Um, if you can please issue a notice of intent to bid by today, um, it's not required, but it is encouraged. That would be great. You can submit that to pira.rfp at ct.gov, where you can also issue, issue any questions or clarifications on the RFP by July 7th. We will um, plan to respond to those by July 14th, and then we ask that proposals um, be submitted to Pira by July 26th at 11.59 p.m. Um, also to the pira.rfp at ct.gov email. Um, if there are no final questions, we thank you for your time this morning um, and we look forward to your proposals and um, hope you have a great rest of your week.